Hello, friends, and welcome to Focus on the Bible. So glad you could join us today. It's a special show. I appreciate if you could invite your friends to this episode. As always, thanks so much for your prayers and your support for me and my family. Can you, quick, quick, give a definition for me? How do you define the word truth? I'll give you just a moment, but if you're struggling with that, hang on. We're going to talk about that. I'm concerned today in the world that so many people are just not facing truth and therefore are not facing how important it is to speak the truth and live by the truth, to act according to the truth. Way back in the books of Moses, we get the Bible's first view at how important it is to be men of truth. In Exodus chapter 18 and verse number 21, Moses is receiving advice about what he can do because his load is too heavy as he leads those two million Jews into the place of their freedom. His advice that comes to Moses is in 1821. Here we go. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. That's good advice. Moses has a load way too heavy for one man. So look out these men who fear God and men of truth who will help you, Moses. That's good advice. But let me ask you, friend, if, if you were given that advice today, could you find 70 men who fear God and who love the truth? I think we might struggle to find those men. It seems that all of a sudden, so few people love the truth and even fewer people are willing to speak the truth outside of fear of consequences. Where are the truth tellers in our world today. In verse 23, the Bible says, If thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. See, the world today is not in peace. The world's in chaos, absolute chaos and violence everywhere, and a world full of lies. We need to go to our place of peace, and only, only the truth can get us there. Let's talk about that definition now. What is truth? Well, truth is that which corresponds to reality. Truth is that which corresponds to what's real in the world. Now, truth may make me happy or sad, but whatever it does... It's what's real. Number two, emotions do not determine truth. Just because something might make me sad doesn't mean I can say that is not truth for me. No, the truth is the truth. The truth exists. The truth is right there. Number Two then says that my emotions can't determine what's true. The truth is, my emotions inform me what I feel when I face that truth. Number three, goals and sought after outcomes do not determine the truth. Just because I want something really bad doesn't mean that I can warp what's real, what's true in order to try and achieve my goal. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we're a football team and we want to score a touchdown so badly. Can we say, well, we get to have six downs on this series. We don't have to punt ever. 
We can just keep having downs until we score because that'll make us all happy. No, that's a rejection of what's true. I saw Western the other day. They were trying to learn how to play baseball back in the old days, and the umpire said, that's strike five. One more strike and you'll be out. That was so funny. It was sad because they were having a, having a lousy game. They were all fussing and fighting because they didn't know the true rules of the game. And that's a perfect picture of the world today. Number four, there's beautiful truth and ugly truth. Now, beautiful truth is all over the place in our songs and poems. But the ugly truth sometimes is forgotten about. But friend, truth is a good thing to know, whether it's beautiful or ugly, whether it makes me happy or sad. I want the truth because then I'm dealing in a world that's real. Then I know what the situation is. Then I know where the enemy lies. I know what the opponent looks like and what he can do to me. If I face the truth, at least now I can make a battle plan. And I can call on God in a real world of truth. Number five, the truth does not change. Truth doesn't change. Let me give an example of this. I might say, it is sunny and speak the truth. Now, you might come back to me not liking the truth of the matter. And you might say, well, tomorrow it it may be raining. So you're not speaking the truth. No, no. I spoke truth that it is sunny, and that truth will never change. It's true right now. It'll be true tomorrow, no matter what the weather is. The weather changes. Time changes. But when I speak today, it is sunny. That is the truth now and forevermore. Nothing can change that truth spoken in this moment. That's good. That's good. I hope it's helpful to you today. Number six now, those who speak truth to us are doing something noble for us. Truth tellers should be held up. Truth tellers should be admired. Truth tellers should be followed. In the book of Galatians, Paul the Apostle brought the truth to that region of Galatia, and they believed the gospel he taught them and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Later, liars came, troublemakers came. They were heretics, and they told the people that faith in Jesus alone could never save. They had to obey the law. They had to do good works. They had to do deeds of obedience in order to really be saved. Paul hit the roof, and we have in our Bibles the book of Galatians as Paul deals with this truth. But the Galatians were upset with Paul now. And they were so upset with him. When Paul wrote this letter to them, he says in Galatians chapter 4, that before you would have plucked your eyes out and given them to me for my eyes. But now he looks at them and writes one of the saddest verses I've ever seen in the Bible. Galatians 4 and verse 16, Paul says to them, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Friend, those who are speaking the truth to us are doing a noble act on our behalf and nothing could be friendlier than pointing out the truth to someone. Now, there's one more of these truths about truth, number seven, that I want to give you, but you'll have to stick around to the end today to get that one. I want to ask another question. What then is a lie? Well, that's an easy definition now that we understand what is the truth. A lie is that which does not correspond to reality. Today, there are demonstrations going on all across the world. Most of them are not based in truth. They're based on someone's idea about what they want to be true, what they wish were true, but not based in truth. Most demonstrations are a lot of people speaking loudly about that which they know not. This is what I find in the world. I'd love a great demonstration of truth speaking, but it's not what I find mostly today. Just not enough truth tellers, courageous enough to speak loudly today. How many of those are in your life? You should call them friend. You should support them in their work. How horrible it is. Let me give you an example. A man heard the unproven theory of evolution in school. They told him it was science. He believed them. 
He rejected faith in God and built his own atheistic faith around an unproven idea that made him feel better. Why did it make him feel better? Well, because now he's invented a false reality in which there is no God, therefore no accountability for his wrongdoing, and there's no hell to worry about. It made him feel better because he didn't face reality. Well, now... The man has a crummy life. It's built around lies, not truth. He doesn't have a place of peace to go into at the end of his day. His life is unhappy and he's very lonely. So someone told him, well, just change your gender. Just become a woman. (laughs) Is it that easy? Can you just do that? Well, another question. Can I play basketball in the NBA? I'm 5'9", but why should that matter? I want to play basketball. I want to make money. I want to be famous. Therefore, who's to tell me I can't play in the NBA? Well, a truth teller might, but we don't have many of those today. Well, can I dunk just because I want to or because it would make me feel better if I could hear the cheers after a slam dunk? Well, of course not. This is ludicrous. The loss of facing the truth leaves highly educated people today unable to define words like woman. I'm speaking the literal truth to you. College professors can't do it or won't do it. We have a Supreme Court justice who couldn't define what is a woman. By the way, while we're not able to define stuff, what is gender? What in the world is gender then? Well, it's a source of confusion for a lot of students who are in our schools who are being told a bunch of nonsense. Well, What is gender? Who could even know? Who can know how many? Now, I know how many sexes there are. There are two of them. It pointed out in the Bible. There's a male and a female. There's a man and a woman. They, too, make up family. That's good. But is is it just easy enough to to invent something called gender and say, that well, there's a hundred of them, and I can just take my pick and be any of them? Well, friend, I'm just begging then to be living according to any figment of my imagination, and I'm not living in a real world. And it'll be a world that will never, ever bring me peace. There's no place of peace outside of facing our own reality and the truth presented to us. No matter how it makes us feel or no matter what the end goal might be, truth is a good thing, and those who speak it, are doing a noble act. Truth number seven, friend, Jesus is the greatest expression of truth. The Bible says in Psalm 57 in verse 10, the mercy of God runs to the heavens and the truth, his truth goes to the clouds. Amen. Jesus is God's greatest expression. John chapter 14 and verse number six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. There is no greater statement of truth than the person of Jesus Christ, friend, in our world. He faced the truth that we are fallen sinners, unable to save ourselves or make it to heaven in our own way. And Jesus Christ faced the reality of that. And Jesus Christ was willing to go to any unpleasurable outcome to throw a lifeline of rescue to fallen sinners. He's the only way. There's not another way to go in. Paul nails it in that great letter of Galatians. And the only way is to acknowledge the truth Jesus brought to us. Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. Friend, you and I have fallen short. We need to face the truth of it, no matter how it makes us feel. And we need to deal with our reality. The reality is Jesus went to the cross to pay our penalty. He paid it to the full. It's all documented history. He's risen from the dead. He'll save you if you'll believe in him this moment. Amen.